Hey guys, this is Venture Tech. And this is the HP Spectre X360. So this might look like a new box here, but I've actually had this laptop for almost two years now. I bought it in August of 2015. And I kind of wanted to make a video of how it held up during those two years. So if we take a look at the box here, it's a pretty nice box. It's actually very nice. And here's the laptop. It's the X360. It's pretty nice. And we got some instructions and stuff there. We can just put that away. So when I originally bought this, the uh, retail price was eleven forty nine, so one thousand one hundred forty nine dollars, which is a lot for uh, a laptop. And it was going to be my first laptop. So the trim that I got it with, the specs specifications were, um, let's see here. <laughs> Uh, I7, yeah. I7. 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 I have to check the sticker. Yo, um, wait, wait, let's just like check the specs. Yeah, let's. Yeah. I don't even know if the specs are in there. But whatever. Let's check on your phone or something. Yeah, whatever, whatever. So I think it was an I. Yeah, it was definitely an I7. I think it was the top line I7 that they offered. 256 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM, DDR3, um, 8 gigs of RAM, and Intel uh, HD 5600 graphics. As you can see, the touchpad is enormous. This is an iPhone 6S. This is the touchpad. 6S touchpad. One interesting thing to note is that when the keyboard is not in its backlit mode, the keyboard backlit key lights up and it's really bothering. It's really annoying. So, But when you press it, then all the keys light up. So that's better. So as you see with a lot of competitors of this laptop, like the XPS 13, the bezels are very small, like their Infinity Edge display. But here, the bezels are just enormous, like it's just really big. As you can see, if you didn't tell by the name, this is a two-in-one laptop, which has its pros and its cons. Obviously, with a Windows 10 uh, system, when it's in tablet mode, the computer recognizes it and turns into this interface, which is tablet oriented. Alright, so in terms of port selection here, we have the Windows button, which basically just puts the Windows screen on. Then we have the volume rocker, which is very interesting to see on the laptop. <laughs> Next to that we have a mini display port, which is nice. Next to that we have a full HDMI 2.1, actually no, that's 2.0, my bad. And then the two next to that are USB 3.0 ports, and the one next to that is obviously a headphone port. As you can see, on the other side we have a full SD card reader, which is great to have nowadays without those dongles. And then we have the power button, another uh, USB type, USB 3.0 port, a huge vent, and the power. When it comes to speakers, just trying to. are unfortunately located on the right and left side of the bottom of the speaker which kind of limits their sound quality but if they're still pretty good for their for their size. So in terms of keyboard layout the X360 is pretty normal in terms of keyboard layout and um, the only weird thing is that the, um, the up and down arrows are really small compared to the out arrows which is a little bit annoying to get used to, but it's alright. So the top row of keys here is pretty unique and it offers an airplane an airplane mode button, a mute button that glows orange when it's in mute mode, a volume up and down, play pause, skip tracks back and forth, key backlit button that's always lit when it's, uh, when it's not backlit the rest of the keys, and which is interesting, a project button that cycles between the projection modes and brightness 
and an interesting button which has a question mark on it. Now if we press this question mark button, a page opens in Bing and in Microsoft Edge, which is a how to get help in Windows 10 search, which is pretty interesting. So typing on the X360 compared to other laptops is pretty, it's a pretty nice experience. Uh, there are uh, some downsides with the space key where it's not as responsive on the ends as it is in the middle. But other than that, it's a very, very rounded keyboard. Uh, they have a, they, the keys have a pretty good travel, and uh, it's a nice keyboard to have long term. So the design of the laptop is very nice. It's an all aluminum build. The cool part is that engraved in the side of the laptop is Hewlett Packard in nice silver lettering. The front has this interesting little line running across, I guess, to give you more grip when you pull it up. And it is a nice one finger open, and it's uh, very easy to open on the back. The sides are laden with, laden with ports, as usual. The back has this nice silver hinge. So on the back of the laptop, you see this nice Hewlett Packard logo in lettering on the back of the laptop, and on the bottom, you find a big vent with some uh, labels and the feet that protect it from the ground and a bunch of screws to open the top, which is pretty easy on this laptop. So all in all, this laptop is very nice to use all the time. Obviously the 2-in-1 has its flaws and its benefits, but if you know how to use it and know how to use it well, it's very nice to have. The touchscreen, like on any other laptop, is a nice thing to have around and when you get used to using the touchpad on this laptop and you try another laptop and it doesn't have a touchscreen you're going to be a little bit disappointed because it kind of gets in your workflow system so over the two years that i've had it it's just been a very good workstation pc and uh, i haven't had any trouble with graphics or anything it's just been very reliable and the aluminum build obviously makes it a very, very um, sturdy computer and it hasn't really, I haven't dropped it very much. And it really hasn't failed on me. The only time it did was when I spilled orange juice all over the, comp all over the keyboard and it had to go back to the factory. But other than that, it was very, very good. So thanks for watching, guys. See you guys in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe also.